In this section, we are going to see what is the definition of an ideal MOS cap. So if you take a MOS cap structure like this, as we have always taken, metal oxide semiconductor with gate and bulk or body terminals, the conditions that we are going to take are, number one, that the work functions of metal and semiconductor are same, which means phi m is equal to phi s is the first assumption that we are going to make for an ideal MOS cap. And second, we are going to make that the oxide has no charges inside, which means oxide is an insulator. If you actually put some charges which will get trapped, they cannot move because it's an insulator, the charges cannot move. If they get trapped while manufacturing the MOS cap, there is no way they can escape, right? Hence, this becomes one of the non-idealities. So to start with, we are going to deal with ideal MOS cap. We are going to assume that there are no charges in the oxide, which means oxide has no charges. And the third assumption that we're going to make is oxide has infinite resistivity. Oxide has infinite, infinite resistivity. Which means because the oxide has infinite resistivity, there cannot be current flowing through the oxide when we do the operation with however voltage we apply. And the last but not the least assumption that we are going to make here is no surface, no surface states at the silicon dioxide silicon interface. At the silicon dioxide silicon interface. This is one of the uh, very sensitive and a bit complex topic of this one surface states discussion okay we will not be getting to this point in fact even in non-idealities at the moment which is beyond the scope of this course now taking all these assumptions we're going to say that is ideal MOS cap now let's look at how is the energy band diagram for an ideal MOS cap or MOS cap so let me see at metal oxide and semiconductor. At metal side, the vacuum energy level is E0 and the difference E0 to EF is Q times phi m. We have seen this in the previous video and at oxide, we have E0 and EC is defined with respect to E0 with a value of Q times chi ox. This is EC and we have EV somewhere here. This is EC of the oxide. And now coming to the semiconductor, we are saying the first assumption is phi m is equal to phi s. I mean Q times phi m is equal to Q times phi s. Which means this value, this value this difference should be equal to q phi s which should be equal to this in this case now as we assumed it is p type substrate ev should be somewhere here and ei should be somewhere here and ec is here now as we have seen in the last time that q times chi silicon or semiconductor is this value and uh, in fact this is EI, this is EC, EV and EF. Now given all this, okay, now because the vacuum energy level is same for all of them and we can extend this energy levels till the oxide and draw it like this. Now, even the vacuum energy level would be constant. So, this is how the energy band diagram would look for a ideal MOS cap. Now, if you observe here, 
this MIS cap is in equilibrium. Now, if we take both the terminals and actually short them, nothing's going to happen because both of them are at same potential, right? EF and EF are at same value. So there is nothing that has to be done to actually transfer charges from outside. Let's say if you take the MOS cap like this, MOS cap, and if you short these two terminals, if there is a phi m and phi s difference, in fact, of course, here we are taking it equal. If there is a difference, then there has to be charge exchange when you short them to accommodate the difference. But in this case, there won't be any transfer of charge. However, it is here, even if you short, it's going to be exactly the same. And one important point to note is this value, which is taken as Q times phi F. This is called the Fermi potential. Phi F is called Fermi potential. We know what is Q times phi F value, which is KT ln of Na or Ni. Now we will see in calculation of threshold voltage that this value is a very important quantity. That is this phi F, which is Fermi potential. This is just a measure of saying how much is the doping concentration in the semiconductor underlying the oxide.